Every entrepreneur has been there. Growing pains leads to growth stronger. gains. It's the challenges that cause us to level up. I'm your host, Alicia Dominico. We're especially good at taking data from all of the different systems and visualizing that almost in a simpler way uh, in order to give you that glance at your business um, or that set of dashboards that you can look at in the first five to 10 minutes of your management team meeting to make sure that you're on track for the week or the month of the quarter. If you tuned into our last episode, you already know Pete Caputa. He brought us behind the curtain on HubSpot's hugely successful agency partner program and shared lessons on how companies in any industry leverage partnerships to build their business. We didn't have time to discuss his latest venture on that last episode. His latest venture is Databox. So we're dropping another Pete Caputa episode. This time we're talking data. More specifically, the kind of data you want from HubSpot but can't always get. That's where Databox comes in. It's an add-on that services and amplifies HubSpot reporting. Maybe you've cleaned up your CRM, check out episode four with Vicki Merritt for more on that, and found you're still not getting the answers you want from within inside of HubSpot. The limitations on HubSpot are that you can usually only compare two or max three data points. So everything comes in at an X and Y access with HubSpot. It's not that the data is not there, it's just that you can't display it in the way that you necessarily want. Maybe you've been frustrated by HubSpot's cap of 20 reports per dashboard and what kind of planning that takes about setting up dashboards around efforts. Yeah, lots of people have felt this way. So Databox doesn't just give you more flexibility in your dashboards, it helps you to tell better stories with your data. We'll get into that later. First, I wanted to understand what inspired Pete to join this company. I decided to leave HubSpot in um, 2016. Um, I am just really passionate about helping agencies and I wanted to build a business where the product strategy and the marketing strategy um, were really aligned to helping agencies. So that's my passion. Um, And I knew that that wasn't good at that point. I knew that that wasn't going to happen anymore the way I wanted to do it uh, at HubSpot. Um, And arguably their decision was the right one. So I'm not trying to claim that I knew anything better or anything. Just I couldn't feel, I didn't feel passionate about it myself. No, I mean, uh, I think that's fair. HubSpot was like, how do we get HubSpot in more companies, right? Like their focus is there and that's why they've had amazing. Yeah. 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 How, you know, he's had massive ambitions to, you know, to build the front office software for the SMB market. And now they're going upstream and doing it even in, in larger organizations. And so, um, and so that was his mission and he was passionate about that. And I was passionate about that for a long time. I was there for nine years. And so I would think about what did I want to build next? And I had some ideas. I started meeting with some uh, investors. Um, yeah, this is while I was still at HubSpot for a little bit. I, for the last year I wrote, I basically just wrote on the blog for a year. I wrote, wrote on the sales blog. Um, and so I had some time to think about things and, and network a little bit and ended up meeting with this investor. Uh, and he said, hey, you got to meet Davrin uh, Gebrovec, who's the co- one of the co-founders of Databox. Uh, and I'm like, I don't want to join a company. Like, I'm, I'm looking to lead my own thing. I have my own vision, blah, blah, blah. I reluctantly met with him and ended up like six months later joining Databox. And what what happened is Davrin and I just really clicked. Um, we complement each other. You know, we don't always agree on everything. We complement each other really well. And... Uh, and I got to go to the product team. There was only 12 people at the time. They had actually raised um, 3.8 million in revenue. Uh, their first year in the business, they booked a half a million dollars of the business from five enterprise clients, um, including like Bose speakers and Converse and Staples, the office store, et cetera. And so they were crushing it. They raised that 3.8 million and then were unable to really sell what they had built. Um, to anyone else, um, or maybe one or two more, but so you're but, talking about um, it was a custom kind of software for these these premium clients. Yeah, I don't know if you remember that scalable. time period. It was like 2012, 13. Everyone thought that like we were gonna stop using computers and use mobile for everything. Um, turned out obviously mobile is is important. Uh, you know, and on the consumer side, we use mobile for a lot of things, but on business, we're still sitting in front of. Uh, 
laptops. screens. Mm -hmm. And so it just didn't sell at the way that it, that it did in the beginning. Um, and so they had pivoted, they had cut their team way back, cut their expenses way back, pivoted more towards the self-service model um, and, uh, and SMB um, and started building integrations with marketing tools. And so it kind of just checked a lot of my boxes. I started to get to know the team a little bit um, and started getting, you know, sharing the product with um, some, some agencies that I know. And, and they're all like, this really solves a problem. We have a real problem with this. We're spending a lot of time on reporting. This looks, looks has to have the potential of helping. And so that's when I kind of made the decision, all right, I'm going to jump in and, and join this company. And so uh, that was 2017. Um, you know, since then, we've, we're now um, 20, a little over 2,600 customers. We're a little under 6 million in annual revenue. Um, we, I did raise a million dollars when I joined. Uh, a lot of the HubSpot execs, uh, invested the former investors put more money in uh, but for the last three years we've been cash flow positive uh, and growing about 50 percent year over year uh, and so um been having fun i think there's a really interesting thing that you just said there though because the promise of hubspot is like you know they sold hubspot for a long time about get up in the morning drink your coffee and check your dashboard and yeah. We do a lot of HubSpot for a lot of different companies and a lot of different mm -hmm. industries. And almost nobody has a dashboard like that with HubSpot that I can think of, that there's just one dashboard that is the health of your business. I'm going to say it publicly. Right. I just think that that's, I think that is actually really a lot harder to get. And you know, you know, you and I yep. have talked about this book, Gino Wickman's. Yeah, yeah a big fan of traction. Yes. Right. Yep. And third step or the third piece of that pie that he builds is data and knowing that you have a weekly scorecard and that everybody yep. is inputting data into that scorecard and you can really see the health of your business. So why That's don't right. you talk about how Databox is going to solve that problem? Thanks. You, yep. I guess I should talk about the actual thing we do. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So you, you hit the nail on the head. I'm a big fan of the entrepreneur operating system or EOS uh, and the book they published traction uh, Gina Wickman published traction um, to kind of introduce the concepts of EOS uh, to the masses and so uh, big big fan of that we uh, we have kind of developed our own process uh, that we we advocate called predictable performance um, I think uh, with EOS, it's built kind of for an analog world in some degree, right? They literally advocate for you to like go into a spreadsheet and have people share their performance every month. Uh, and I get why they do that. It, it breeds accountability, but I think there are other ways to breed accountability without creating busy work. Um, and I also think you should be tracking way more than a handful of metrics for your business in order to be able to make sure that uh, issues aren't occurring, people aren't slacking, systems aren't breaking, ads aren't running crazy, um, off budget, etc. And so, uh, and so, but so we advocate, of course, for um, for for having that dashboard that you're talking about, which is uh, that one dashboard that gives you the high level over your business. But we also advocate, advocate for having drill downs on each of those metrics to really understand why is that metric moving in that direction or not moving in that direction? Uh, and what are the components of that? What are, what, what are the dimensions of those metrics that you should be looking at as well? Such as if you're getting more sessions to your website, what channel is it producing? What, what device is it getting? What piece of content is driving it, et cetera? Uh, and so uh, we're a big fan of what we call an overview dashboard, uh, which you know, if you're a B2B business, that might include something like your website traffic, the number of leads you have, uh, the number of, uh, if you're doing outbound, the number of uh, contacts you've reached out, your sales teams reached out to, uh, deals you're created, uh, calls that were booked or conducted, uh, uh, deals that are closed in every stage of the funnel, of course, of um, customers reta retained, uh, amount of revenue per client, like all of these metrics you should be tracking at a high level on a very close basis. And then below that, every team should really have their high level metrics as well. So for example, on our sales team, we don't just look at the, the uh, outreach emails and uh, the deals created and deals closed. We also look at that by sales rep. So I want to see all those metrics by sales rep. Um, I want to see what my close rate is. I want to see what my sales cycle is. I want to make sure that the channels where I'm getting my calls booked are consistent. Like did for some reason marketing stop booking sales calls for us last week and what do we do to fix that? And so there's a lot to really drill into, but we're, um, 
I think we're especially good at that. I think you're trying to lead, me, lead the horse to water here. We're especially good at taking data from all of the different systems and visualizing that almost in a simpler way uh, in order to give you that glance at your business um, or that set of dashboards that you can look at in the first five to 10 minutes of your management team meeting to make sure that you're on track for the week or the month or the quarter or whatever you measure by. And um, the so, other thing is that yeah. unlike the analog world of someone having to put stuff into um, a spreadsheet, you're pulling the data that is automatically populating from sources like HubSpot where you know yes. the emails getting sent and the phone calls getting made are automatically logged through yeah. the system. You know, you don't need to actually input more data manually, which is what we're yeah. all trying to avoid. I'm glad you're a data box customer and partner, so because you're doing a better job of selling it than I am. But yes, uh, but absolutely. So our strength is that we've built these really deep integrations with a bunch of the most popular software tools. A lot of those happen to be in marketing, but we also cover sales, service, finance um, departments, development, development or product teams as well, um, and so. Yeah, so we've we've studied those tools. We figured out exactly what analytics are in them, and then we kind of pre-build templates and metrics so that uh, a non-technical user can go in and either select the metric or drag the metric onto a dashboard or just pick a dashboard that we pre-built and instantly see their data in about a minute after connecting. Uh, via authenticating into the data source such as and say, it's not always just Google comparing Analytics. two data points right it's not just an x and a y axis there's a lot of different ways of pulling multiple data streams to see a bigger picture i think with datapox too yeah i think there's different ways of visualizing data in databox that you don't get in in many apps including hubspot uh, one of them is like being able to put together a funnel that includes both your marketing and sales data right so in, in inbound especially, um, the funnel starts with marketing. And so you'd want to show the number of users or sessions on your website. Then you want to show the conversions. And then you want to show the deals that you created. But you might also want to show the deals that are qualified and the deals that are closed uh, or an MQL in the middle there. Um, or you might even have Stripe that you use in your business to capture, uh, to collect payment from people. You might want to include Stripe in there. It really depends on what you want in there. And so you can pick each point of the funnel or pipeline and use a different metric from even from a different tool to visualize it uh, and visualize it all in one pipeline. So that, that's an example of one thing. That's a great example because that's what everyone wants to see. It's not just the funnel. It's also the outcome of the funnel, yeah. like show me the money that's right. from the marketing effort. And you could get to see that bigger, yeah. that better funnel with more clearly yeah. delineated points that I care about with Databox. I want to talk about one more thing that is actually my favorite data box dashboard, which Ooh. works really well in a partner reseller program. And I don't know if you remember, but Dan Tire had you create a data box dashboard uh, for agencies. Do you remember this? Yes, of course. Yes. And nothing but a fire under my ass in that <laughs> dashboard and seeing if I was in the top three. Uh, now, I, now I made the connection. I forgot that you were in that <laughs> group. Talk of about course, that. I shouldn't have. How did yeah. you do that? Like, what happened? Who is this Alyssa like... person always asking me, why isn't my number on there? I'm like, because you didn't connect your data. <laughs> I was like, and we got on a Zoom, know. didn't we? We got on a Zoom, and I showed you what I needed from you in order to do it. Okay, yes, so, so we're going to talk about that. So it's a resale. It was it was a whole bunch of HubSpot agencies. So we're all reseller partners, and yeah. I think we all connected our HubSpot CRMs That's right. into a data box. So you could take into multiple, one data box account. into one data yep. box account for Dan, because yep. he was the lion. What we call the lion leader. Right. So everybody connected their own individual CRMs and not in a kind of creepy data way, but just in a way of let's connect our deals closed one for HubSpot, I think yeah. it was, and maybe calls yep. made and meetings. Yeah, I think so. Dan, Dan, it was a sales coaching group. So Dan was encouraging you all to pick up the phone more and send emails more, prospect more, uh, and do more calls and, you know, put more deals in your funnel. And so, yeah, it was like three or four metrics. Um, they kind of demonstrated your acti sales activities. Uh, and then every session that he had, he'd bring that dashboard up. <laughs> it took me forever to get him to show it live. He was always show a screen grab. Um, <laughs> but he'd bring that dashboard up and say, you know, and basically compliment the people at the top and then say, hey, the rest of you, is this important to you? What are you going to do about it this week, right? So he was holding you accountable uh, to that. It was, it was very similar to say how a sales manager would run a sales meeting, except you're all, you know, independent businesses selling, reselling. But that's an amazing use case for someone who's yeah. a manufacturer who's got distributors too. Right. For sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we have some customers that do that. Not a lot. Yeah. And so we could do more. One thing we're doing, though, is launching a tool called Benchmark Groups. 
uh, what benchmark groups will do is allow any business to join a group that of companies like theirs. These groups will be run by individuals, such as say a marketing agency, uh, and they'll be niche. So for example, uh, there might be a group that's uh, run by an agency that services uh, general contractors, residential home builders, uh, and they would only include or invite companies that are general contractors or residential home builders in that group. And it'll be just like we did in, in Dan's group. It'll be, you know, um, it'll be, uh, you, we won't share the actual data of the other members, um, but uh, you'll be able to see how you compare. Or that company will be able to see how they compare. Yep. And so we're actually building that. We plan to launch that next quarter. Uh, and so it would actually enable anybody to go in and see how should I be performing? What wow. do my peers perform like? And because we've done the hard work over the last few years of building these deep integrations with 60 plus other uh, popular SaaS tools, um, we'll be able to do that for literally thousands of metrics. So for example, you might be able to go in and say, how do I compare to other uh, marketing agencies in my size range uh, that are maybe sell or resell HubSpot? Uh, and you'd be able to see how's your marketing compare, how's your sales compare, how's your finances compare, if you want to connect your QuickBooks, how's your social compare, if you're running ads, how does your ads compare? Uh, and really get a, a complete picture of how you compare to companies like yours so you can spot like, hey, we're underperforming here and maybe we should do something about it. Or we're overperforming here and maybe we should even lean into it or not worry about it because we're doing so good there. I'm beyond excited. I think it it changes the value that Databox as a company uh, and our, with our product can provide to companies. I think you know, something I learned early on in my sales career is that uh, you know, the, the one of the best values a salesperson can bring is their expertise of helping companies like the one they're talking to. So if you're showing up and you're talking to, I'm just keep using the same example, a pest control company, and you've helped 20 other pest control companies, you can give that owner of that pest control company confidence that what you are recommending will work for them. Uh, and that's really hard to do without having 10 or 20 years of work of experience doing one thing, uh, which very few people have. And so uh, I think to me, you know, maybe it were, were that experience, I think will still be very relevant uh, in anyone that's trying to help people. But the data that we're providing, I think will help a lot more people really understand where they should be and what they should be doing and all that. Well, and so often you go like HubSpot had the ROI calculator for years and you're mm -hmm. like, okay, what yeah. are you getting monthly visitors, monthly traffic, yes. whatever. Yeah. Nobody ever knows the answers to that. I have yet to sell to somebody who knows any of that data. Right. So it's you like, know what? Uh, I created that, right? It's amazing. It's such a good tool. And it, it <laughs> did definitely help me sell, but I had to yeah. always fudge the numbers and give them an idea of what they're probably that's, doing. That's the point. The point is that nobody knew, and you yes. were the first person to, to ask. Say, to say, what do you they probably, know? they probably, in their life, right? They probably talked to twenty marketing agencies, and no marketing agency ever bothered to ask, even. And so, yeah. by you being the first one to ask and help them think through what those numbers should be, um, you know, you're you're separating yourself from the pack and you're demonstrating your actual interest in helping them yeah. uh and so and not yeah, just do I think fancy footwork benchmarks is marketing, kind of a next level of that but to actually show like right. that campaign mic drop moment of the campaign yeah. tools and close one money on your marketing right i agree i right. love that tool exactly. i think it's great i just think it's amazing that we still you know we're still struggling to get data in our companies um so it's great to see that mm. companies like databox work exist and that you're not only just adding value you're going to double your value with this benchmarks tool and reasons for why people will need you in terms of what's unique about data box so that's really, really so i can cool. charge you twice as much you is that what you're saying you twice as much <laughs> <laughs> call me next week we'll it'll discuss. actually be free uh. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that is you know that just when something is for double value and it doesn't cost you any extra to add like if you were to read yeah. a lot of these business books they'd say what can you add for free that would really just make you stand out more unique you know it really does yeah. bring the the value the unique value proposition much to make the sales process much more quick
Yeah. Well, it goes back to what I told you I'm passionate about and what, and like it took me five years to get to the point where we're building what I want to do. To me, there's I know there's a quarter million agencies out there struggling with this problem of showing up to a client and saying, here's what you should be perfor- you should be performing. And I know if I can enable even just a few thousand agencies uh, to confidently say, here's the performance you should hit, that those conversations will go a lot smoother and a- those collective agencies will help millions of companies uh, improve their performance. And so that's really... That's really what I'm excited about. Predictable performance, a single overview dashboard that actually tells you what you need to know every morning and the opportunity to drill down on what's actually driving those metrics is what every company wants. And you can get some of that, of course, out of the box with HubSpot. But if it's not displaying that you want the way that you want it to see, or it's not pulling in data from multiple sources, Databox is the option you want. All of that you set up once with Databox and it's compiled automatically. One of the ways that I've loved Databox in the past is we've had multiple agencies input their deals in their own HubSpot CRM and compete with each other as to who's winning more deals inside of Databox. We had this lovely Databox dashboard that Pete set up for us agencies one time and week over week we could always see the results of who was closing deals that was pulling data from multiple HubSpot CRMs. So if you have multiple companies that you're in charge of who all have their own HubSpot portals, Databox is an amazing solution. Or if you're pulling e-commerce data and you're pulling HubSpot data and your stack is a little bit more complicated than the traditional HubSpot setup, Databox is an amazing solution for getting all of those data points to converge. Or if inside of HubSpot, you don't really like the display options, Databox gives you different ways to display those options. For more information on Databox, visit databox.com. Find more episodes of the Company Growth Podcast on YouTube or at anchor.fm slash company growth podcast or wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you've got a company growth story you'd like to share, reach out to Tangible Words. We'd love to hear your story and use it to inspire others to beat their own company growing pains. Until next time, thank you for listening to the Company Growth Podcast.